So the intervertebral discs are small pieces of cartilage in between the vertebral bones, and they serve several functions, but mainly they're sort of a cushion and a, a washer, if you will, between those uh, pieces of bone. Um, because they are soft, they can bulge and sometimes even rupture. Uh, so when that happens, there's a small amount of space within the spinal canal where the nerves live. So if that material extends into that space, there's a high chance or high probability that a nerve could be pinched or even smashed, uh, which can cause significant nerve pain. Uh, and then that pain radiates from the spine, either the neck or the low back most commonly, uh, down the limbs. So a herniated disc in the neck will go down the arms and a herniated disc in the low back will go down the legs. Uh, and we can see a very predictable pain and symptom pattern in the limbs that can help us determine which nerve in the neck or low back is in fact being pinched. We can confirm that with nerve testing or with spinal imaging like MRIs and CAT scans and things like that. We try conservative care. We try uh, medication to control symptoms. We try physical therapy uh, and modalities. Uh, we work with all of the allied health professions, including you know, acupuncturists and chiropractors and, and anyone else who is engaged in back care. Uh, if that doesn't work, the next level of care would you typically be someone like myself, a spinal injectionist to deliver cortisone medication, specifically most often to decrease inflammation uh, of those spinal nerves. If I can't get the patient better or if there's profound weakness or other what we call red flag symptoms that would suggest that possibly the spinal cord is being compressed, then they would go for surgical evaluation or even emergent surgery. So the spinal injection process is simple in concept. It's just sort of complicated in delivery. Uh, and that is it's no different really than any other injection that you might get for a hip or a knee problem where we put a needle uh, into a space where we suspect there's inflammation. Uh, the treatment goal being to decrease that inflammation, decrease symptoms and return function. We do the same thing in the spine, but because it's your spine, which is a very delicate and sensitive organ like your brain or your heart, we have to take a tremendous amount of care uh, when we deliver those injections. Uh, it takes uh, extra training uh, in addition to the several years of medical school and residency training uh, to be able to do those injections with confidence and skill. Um, and we do them under x-ray guidance so that we can see where the needles are going. We utilize contrast enhancement to make sure we're not in the wrong place, such as a blood vessel uh, or something uh, like that. Um, and we do them in a typically, a, you know, sterile sort of setting when we can, um, just to kind of safeguard against any potential complication. The basic idea is that, you know, we obviously treat uh, a ruptured disc problem as an acute injury. Um, as such, you do need to protect yourself just like you would if you had a shoulder injury or a knee injury, right? You would brace that body part and sort of favor that body part and, uh, you know, rest and ice and compression and elevation, all those general orthopedic principles apply. Um, just sort of letting the inflamed tissues calm down and settle down. We can help facilitate that with anti-inflammatory medications, with the anti-inflammatory steroid injections if necessary. Uh, and then we can help protect your back uh, with uh, core strengthening and physical therapy uh, and those kinds of modalities. Uh, we can get you through this very, very painful problem. Most people uh, don't require surgery for this, um, but it's you know one of those things that when you have it, you wish you didn't and we're here to help get rid of it. <laughs>